केवीयू में हो रहा है पॉप विद कॉप नाम का एक इवेंट और वहां पर आपको आर के साथ कोई भी क्वेश्चन आंसर्स जो हैं वो हो रहे हैं सो लेट्स गो ऑलरेडी लेट हूँ दस बज चुके हैं एंड इवेंट ग्यारह बजे शुरू होने वाला है सो लेट्स गो सो so, आज काफ़ी हवा चल रही है और हालांकि ट्रैफिक नहीं है सनलाइट काफ़ी ज़्यादा है सो so, थोड़ा uh, टाइम तो लगेगा ही बिकॉज जाने में ही लाइक मुझे तकरीबन पौना घंटा तो लग ही जाता है दस दस पे चले थे सो मे बी वेल रिच देयर एट अराउंड टेन फिफ्टी सो लेट सी वॉट हैपन्स एट दी एम जो बस आने वाली है दैट इज गोइंग टू बी लेट आई एम नॉट श्योर कि आप देख पा रहे हो नहीं बट स्टिल इट इज शोइंग 10:33 और बस लेट है तो इस वजह से हम भी लेट ही पहुंचेंगे तकरीबन 11:30 बजे और आई होप कि जल्दी पहुंचे आई एम शो यू व्हाट विल हैपन कई बार क्या होता है कि आप पूरा टाइम से पहुंच जाते हो लेकिन बस टाइम से नहीं आती है सो so, उस वजह से क्या होता है कि आप कई बार लेट भी हो जाते हो बट आई कैन सी कि बस आ ही गई है यू गो और वो भी नॉट इन सर्विस है तो मानकर चलो कि आपको थोड़ा और जो है वेट करना पड़ सकता है एंड देन यू कैन गेट लेट आई ऑलवेज बी प्रिपेयर्ड एंड बी अहेड ऑफ टाइम सो जो सेकंड बस लेनी थी वो आई थी लेकिन वो काफ़ी ज़्यादा भरी हुई थी सो आई हैव टू वॉक टू द कॉलेज और ये चीज़ सबसे ज़्यादा बुरी लगती है कि आप प्रॉपर टाइम पर भी आते हो बट फिर भी ना लाइक कई बार आपको uh, बस जो है वो फिर भी मिस हो जाती है बस आने के बावजूद तो आपकी मिस हो जाती है क्योंकि वो कैपेसिटी ज़्यादा हो नहीं सकती सो दैट इज़ अ होल लॉट ऑफ फ्रस्ट्रेशन टेन फिफ्टी थ्री ऑलरेडी हो चुके हैं एंड अभी कॉलेज पहुंचना था ग्यारह बजे अभी मुझे लगता है तकरीबन पंद्रह बीस मिनट लगे मुझे चल कर जाने में सो लेट्स वॉक सो फाइनली हम पहुँच गए हैं के में और अभी इवेंट जो है वो हो रहा है सीटर बिल्डिंग में सो लेट्स गो टू दीटर बिल्डिंग एंड लेट मी शो यू वट इज हेयर तो ये जो इवेंट है ये करवाया जा रहा है गोंडलैंड स्टूडेंट एसोसिएशन के द्वारा और जो इनके प्रेसिडेंट हैं अरमान टलो उनका एक स्पेशल मैसेज आया था कि भाई इस इवेंट को अगर आप कवर कर सको सो आई थॉट कि हाँ हाँ क्यों नहीं अपनी कम्युनिटी के लिए तो कुछ भी करेंगे है ना सो दैट्स वाई लेट्स गो टू द इवेंट I was with the Diversity and Indigenous People Unit, and uh, Sergeant Dale Quering is part of my team. He is, as you can see, a little different uniform. He's with Surrey Police Service. Surrey, Surrey Police Service will be taking over uh, Surrey RCMP, and that's why they're here. Sergeant uh, Khalid Dilo is with the uh, Crime Reduction Unit, also called as uh, Community Response Unit, uh, and uh, we have Mansoor Khan, who is part of my team. In Canada, life is not all about enforcement. Police agi, that means you're going to jail. This is not the case here. We do a lot of prevention. We do a lot of education. We're out in schools. We're out on universities. We are everywhere. We talk to seniors, to kids, to universities, to you name it. At the end of the day, my goal today is that if I, if you can learn a few things, whether it's your rights in Canada, what to do, what not to do, how to behave, not to behave, if you have a personal question, a private question. Come talk to me. This is why I have all these police officers here, so that way we can answer your questions. And here, if we help somebody, we are genuinely helping you. We're in the public service industry. My number one job is your safety. A part of emergency services is police, fire, and ambulance. When you call nine one one, what happens? It goes to one one of these three people. It's not always that. A lot of times, we associate with nine one one or police. It's all over with them. So if you have somebody, you're living with a senior, even your landlord upstairs, or somebody in the dark front yard, back yard, if somebody's having a heart attack, nine one one. When a traffic stop is made by an unmarked car and that somebody in plain clothes, you have this is where your rights. You are well within your rights to ask them for their badge and picture ID. So when would you call nine one one? Uh, when someone's life is in danger, or there's an immediate threat to the person or property, uh, we also protect property. And, like for example, if somebody's breaking a window, their intention is to do it, but they haven't actually gone in, right? They've only broken. So that's something you can call nine one. Their nine one one. Sorry, their intent is to go inside. Right? Um, a crime in progress, such as break and enter. Uh, if you see, look out your window, and there is some guy peeking into your car, call nine one. 
It is something in progress. It's in progress that is happening in front of your eyes. Okay? Uh, when a serious crime has uh, just happened, then suspect may still be near, near and or near the scene. Probably, for example, if somebody looking like that, cartoon, is walking around and is dressed like that, long trench coat, glasses, mask, hoodie, hat, and he's being suspicious, peeking into people's houses, peeking into people's cars, 911. Right? A fight in progress. You step outside your university and two students or a group of students are fighting, call 911. Why? It's, it's something in progress. And if you ever call 911, which is not a 911 call, I know our staff will never call you back or say, oh, geez, this is not a 911. Why did you call me? We will never do that. We will still take the call. And the police officer attending the scene, if you say, hey, I'm complaining, they might say, well, geez, look, this is a fraud that's happened in the past, so you can need to call them. You see what I'm saying? So 911, when we receive 911, our antennas are up. Something big, bad, something in progress is going on. Yeah, if you accidentally call 911, stay on the line. Stay on the line. If you hang up, we're calling back. If you don't pick up, we're trying to find your location. We'll find you and we'll come talk to you. Here, we can very easily find out from your cell phone location as to where you are, right? So if you make a 911 call accidentally, stay on the phone. Stay on the phone and tell us that, hey, there's nothing going on, everything is okay. Um, I touched my phone and I accidentally died. We'll ask you who you are, blah, 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 are you okay? We get a lot of accidental 911, especially with the iPhones now, that's a really big problem. I'm sure a lot of you guys have had that, some people have had that experience with you. You know, you turn the truck, turn off the uh, alarm, and then it accidentally calls an alarm on. And then sometimes, if you're home, we have to come and check to make sure that you're okay. You're not in trouble. You're not gonna get a fine or anything like that. That's not what happens. The purpose of us coming to your house is to make sure that you're okay. Because sometimes people call 911 and they might be being held hostage, or they might be in trouble with somebody. And you know, if you and me are having an argument and you see me calling 911, that might make you angry or make somebody else angry. So then they say, oh, no, no, I didn't call. Uh, it was an accident. So we have to come to make sure that was it actually an accident, right? Is this person being blackmailed or they're being threatened, right? And then and sometimes it can be said in inconvenience, but just imagine if you were actually in that situation, you would definitely want a police officer to uh, the Community Response Unit is a group of members. It's a unit that is responsible for targeting community-oriented problems, drug houses, neighborhood problems, um, community issues, right? But it's important to know, like, you know, one of your friends hanging out with you all the time, all of a sudden stops hanging out with you, you see him once in a while, he's always sweating, always shaking, you know, something's up. Something's wrong with this person. Not responding to your texts, phone calls, right? You might call non merch and be like, hey, I'm worried about this person. Can you guys go check up on them? And we do that. I would talk to this person for two weeks. I used to talk to them every single day. Can you guys make sure he's alive? We will absolutely do that. If I have to kick in his door, I will do that to make sure that he's alive. But it's important to know those symptoms. Yeah, this last time I saw him, he was shaking, he's sweating a lot, and he's really dizzy, and he was talking about, like, you know, nothing's going on good in his life. And, those are signs. You need to know what those signs are. So unexplained change behavior, withdrawn or edgy, people get angry quickly, loss of motivation, defiant school performance, secretive, smell on clothing or breath. You look at their eyes, people, people get dilated or you know they're smaller than usual. Something they don't look like. Um, and change in peer group and don't talk about their friends. So what happens when you get charged? Police gets involved, we arrest you, we charter, caution, follow the legal requirement. We take you back to the detachment, photographed, fingerprinted. So what happens? You're charged and convicted now. You go to court, you get convicted. The judge says, yeah, you did what you did. You're guilty. Boom. And now it's time to sentence. As soon as you're charged, we engage CBSA and Immigration Canada. Again, I have to, this is the, given that person's status. Okay, so we have to, it's not a choice. I have to let Immigration Canada know, CBSA know, that this is what we have, okay? And this is serious stuff. To me, this is very serious. Granted, if you're born and raised here, 
you guys have a full life ahead of you. Uh, once you have a criminal record, you may not be able to travel or cross the border and then return to Canada. Your job opportunities, I can tell you, will be very limited because job opportunities right now, you go work uh, for a school, you want to volunteer as a coach, you may be a great cricket player, volleyball player, soccer player. You want to go volunteer, you'll have to uh, get a criminal record. You come to us and ask for a criminal record, we'll give you a criminal record. The school is going to say, ah, thanks, but no thanks. We don't want people like you. So it affects everything. Consent is something that is not openly talked about, especially in Indian households. But you, especially girls, you need to know some of these things, right? A lot of times kids are like, oh, geez, you know, she was talking to me, she was laughing, and I thought we were hugging and kissing, and I thought I took that as consent. But that is not consent. So those are some of the things that's very important. In our household, Indian households, I know we don't talk about this, uh, especially back home in villages and cities, even very few people, parents will have a sit down at the dinner table and have this conversation. But I want you to have some understanding of what consent is. Because there's a lot of things going on in Syria that are not at the forefront, but stuff is happening, right? If you know somebody who's involved in something, I'm not going to beat around the bush, whether it's prostitution or whether it's uh, sexual exploitation, talk to them. You've spoken to us, get them in touch with us, we'll talk to them. If you know there are things going on and it's a female or a male or whoever they need that kind of help, help them out. Sometimes a person may say yes and later be hesitant or feel uncomfortable about continuing. Even if you're in the middle of a sexual act and she happens or he happens to say no, stop. That means no, stop. There's no if or maybe or could you please or none of that. Very important. Very important for our boys to understand. Very important for our female students to understand. Consent can be applied to various aspects of daily life, sexual activity, photo sharing. I want to give you an example of photo sharing, information sharing, uh, social interactions. Information sharing, I gave you an example of uh, Medical information, if it's her medical information, I know about it. I cannot, cannot, cannot share her medical information to somebody else. I can get sued. Photo sharing, I'll give you an example. There's a, a hockey team. One of the players was dating a young girl. She sent pictures to that guy because they were boyfriend, girlfriend. They were, I think she was 16 and he was uh, probably 18 or 19 so and what he did was he shared it with his entire hockey team she sent those pictures strictly to him hoping that it, it's going straight to the to the boyfriends but he ended up sharing with uh, the entire team so now because she's a lot of age it's not only possession of child pornography it's also distribution of child pornography so it can land you in some hot water depending on what information you share social media is a phenomenal tool, but at the same time, if you misuse it, it'll come back and bite you. Uh, so, so thank you, everyone. We've got our uh, MLA from Surrey Newton and Minister of Labor for BC, Mr. Harry Bands. Please have a round of applause. I, on behalf of Portland School Association, we are really thankful to Mr. Bands for coming here and inviting the students and we would like to request him for a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming here. I think this session that you have uh, gone through and what I've watched uh, 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 Sergeant John as a presentation, very, very, very important. I can't stress the focus on this, especially the consent. I can tell you when I came, 50 years ago. I was just like you. But think about this. Where you are today, 50 years later, you could be standing here. One of those guys, me, or anything else, or you could be a president of the university here. That's the, that's the opportunity that Canada gave me. That's the opportunity Canada has given me, and I'm a living example here. To study, and, and understand your responsibilities. That's more important. And I can tell you, education 
education, education should be the only thing you should be thinking right now. That is the base that will help you to be whoever you want to be. And be good at it. And the other thing is, education, in my belief, is, is the best form of equality in society. When every child, whether you are son, daughter of a janitor or CEO, they have the same opportunity to get the best education. Think about this, the kind of country and the community you have, the skill food that you would have as a country, but also all of you have the same kind of pretty power. So that's where the equality in society comes. That's where you will see you know, different between rich and poor as you see in some of the countries. The future is bright. It's in your hands. It's up to you. I leave it with you and uh, I just say, go for it. You could be standing here one day as minister, even a premier, or a police officer, or whatever. Today we have businesses run by property that is the pinnacle of any businesses in Canada and the United States. This is how we have come. They did it for us. We are standing on their shoulder, people came before us. You have a responsibility also to shape up our future. So that you could say 50 years down the road, hey, due to my role, it's my role that I play, Canada is a better place than what I do. Thank you very much and enjoy. I know there is a stigma uh, that we are we have in students among the students related to police and all those agencies, law enforcement agencies. But we do really appreciate that you guys showed up. And these type of events are not just for once, but we, as your student society, we plan to have those these type of events coming in the future as well, in the in the more uh, usual basis, so that you can you people can get the answers of the queries that you have right now from police or from your local representatives. Uh, I still want to focus on one thing that Mr. Harry Vance is our local MLA. He's our Harry Vance because he's the MLA from this constituency, the place that we, where we are standing right now. And I really, I really want to thank Staff Sergeant Mr. Stram and Sergeant Mr. Devon, Sergeant Mr. Johul, uh, uh, Constable Mr. Uh, Carlo, and we have wonderful managers that we have, Constable uh, uh, Coordinator Misha and manager from ISPS. We are really thankful to you and uh, talking to students is always uh, something different that you do in your daily lives. But we do really appreciate you took our time from your precious students and you came to us and talked with our wonderful students. Thank you to everyone and thank you to all of you who came and made this event a wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you. Last year of the Board of Governors here between 93 and 99 of this college. Yes. I mean, you could do anything. Like I said, you know, being a president of the university, you could do anything. It's, it's, it's there for you guys to just have any questions. questions. Be there. Yeah, yeah, you can always ask questions to your MLA, your police officers, you have your sergeants, commanders. Please come forward and have your questions answered. So right now, uh, event ho chuka hai Sarah aur MLA Harry Vance bhi aaye the. So I think event was really good. Aapne highlights to dekhi liye honge ki kya kya unhone show kiya. So I think that's all for today. Thank you for watching.